Hello, welcome back. We've been talking about the equations of motion. So far, we've talked about acceleration, and we've looked at the different terms of acceleration and how we can get the local acceleration and also the field acceleration terms. Now, we're going to look at the different forces, all those net forces that can give us our acceleration, including the pressure gradient force, gravity, Coriolis, friction, and other forces. All right, so here are in words, in word form, um, is the simple equation of motion. Acceleration equals one over density times pressure gradient force plus gravity plus Coriolis plus other forces, including friction and other forces. The first uh, a term that we're going to look at is this first term here, pressure gradient for force. And first we'll look just in the x direction. So to review, we remember that in the x direction we have a horizontal pressure gradient. So a horizontal pressure gradient, the horizontal gradient of the pressure is the change in the pressure over the horizontal distance. So that would be dp dx for the x direction, which is what we have modeled down here. So to find this, we're going to take PB over here minus PA over here and divide that by XB, the position over here, minus XA, the position over here. And we see that in this, and this will give us our X component of the pressure gradient. Since in this case, what we have is a low pressure uh, for PB, we know is less than P sub A. So in that case, since it's a low pressure over here and a higher pressure on this point, then what we end up with is PB minus PA is in fact uh, a negative value, the way it's drawn here, so it's pointing to the left, and XB minus XA will be a positive value because we're always increasing to the right. And so our overall pressure gradient is pointing to the left or in the negative direction, the west direction. So the gradient of the pressure, the change in the pressure over the distance, dp dx, points from low pressure to high pressure. And that gives us our pressure gradient. But we know the objects roll downhill from high pressure to low pressure. And so when we look at the pressure gradient force, that actually goes in the opposite direction. So it points from high pressure to low pressure. And so our pressure gradient force in the x direction will be negative dp dx. So our pressure gradient force in the x direction is negative dp dx. And we can expand that to the y direction, so that will be negative dp dy. And similarly, in the z direction, we'll have negative dp dz. I've written these as partial derivatives because p could be changing in multiple directions. Now let's move on to the next term, and the next term is gravity. Gravity, of course, we know, points straight towards the center of the Earth when we're talking about anything near the Earth. And it is governed by the gravitational attraction of the Earth, which is this little g right here. And we know that little g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So the gravitational force is going to be the mass times the acceleration. So that would be m times g, but in terms of the ocean, since it's a fluid, that what we're looking for is the gravitational force per unit volume, so that will be our mass per unit volume, which will be negative rho g. Now the gravitational force will only show up, of course, in the z direction, because we have set up our coordinate axes so that z is in the direction of gravity. So there will be no gravitational force in x or y. So the term minus rho g only shows up in the z component of our equations of motion. Now, if we look at just let's look at the z equation of motion and in this case 
we're going to look at our pressure gradient force right here and gravity. So we've got both pressure gradient force and gravity. And then of course there's friction and other forces that can exist, but typically in the ocean, especially in the Z direction, the vertical direction, there's not a big uh, uh, change in the vertical velocity with time. So if we assume that dw dt is zero, which is an assumption we make a lot when we're doing, when we're looking at uh, dynamics in the ocean, and we assume that the friction and any other forces are minimal, then what we end up with is zero equals negative dp dz minus rho g. And if we solve for this, what we get is dp dz equals negative rho g. And then we can also do separation of variables and integrate, and we end up with P equals the integral from zero to Z of rho G dz, where in this case, I've defined Z as positive downward, and over here, Z is being defined as negative downward. And we know that these relations right here give us our hydrostatic balance. So, Frequently, when we're looking at the Z equation, it gives us our hydrostatic balance in the ocean. All right, the next term we're gonna look at in our equations of motion is Coriolis. So to remind us about Coriolis, let's look at, at how Coriolis forces deflect a path, the path of moving objects. So this is what we've looked at before. The example right here is an, uh, is an object moving east in the northern hemisphere. So the object is moving east, so it has its own little velocity, little u, and the Earth, of course, is also rotating to the east, so it has its velocity, big u. And we found that because there is a centripetal acceleration acting on this object, that we can find its Coriolis force. And when we did that, we saw that the only component that was important, that the Coriolis force right here was equal to two omega u. And we split that up into components. And so that the only component that was important is the component that's acting along the surface of the earth. This component right here, two omega u sine theta. So, that gave us a Coriolis acceleration in the negative, uh, uh, in the negative direction, in the negative y direction. So it's uh, with a value of negative f times u, where f is our Coriolis parameter of two omega sine theta. Remember, omega is two pi over 24 hours equals 7.29 times 10 to the minus fifth radians per second, and theta is our latitude. So an object moving east in the plus x direction in the northern hemisphere is accelerated south in the minus y direction. And the magnitude of that would be a negative f times u. So that's the acceleration that we would expect in the y direction. So we know that Coriolis is only going to act in the x or y directions. So I've written it here just as Coriolis first. And we just saw that in the y direction, that Coriolis acceleration is equal to negative Fu. Now the force, of course, is going to be the force per volume, per unit volume, will be rho times negative Fu. And in the x direction, so we end up with negative rho u. Now in the x direction, if we did the same uh, uh, derivation that we did in the, for, to get the, the acceleration in the y direction, we, end, we would end up with v times f for our acceleration. And it is positive because we can imagine that an object moving um, in the positive north direction, so an object that has a v velocity, so it's just, every, all its velocity is in v, so be moving in the positive north direction, will be accelerated to its right, which would be east, which would be a positive acceleration in the x direction. So that's why we end up with plus rho vf for the Coriolis force in the x direction. All right, so bringing all these ideas together, what we see is that we have 
three different equations of motion for the x, y, and z directions. In the x direction, we have our pressure gradient force plus our Coriolis force plus our other forces, including friction and other forces. In the y direction, we also have our pressure gradient force, our Coriolis force, and other forces, including friction. And in the z direction, we have our pressure gradient force, we have the force due to gravity, and we have friction and other forces. Those are the equations of motion in their simplest form. We will look at these in more detail later. And the next idea that we're going to get into that is also very important is continuity. So I'll see you to talk about continuity next.